The verse is a term that refers to various parts of poetry, such as single line of poetry, a stanza, or the entire poem. In today's video, we shall look at the different types of verse and their features. Blank verse This is a type of metrical composition which typically consists of lines of unrhymed iambic pentameters. It was the dominant verse used for the English dramatic and narrative poetry since the 16th century. In a nutshell, we can say that a blank verse is a style of poetic composition that has rhythm but has no particular rhyme pattern. In England, it was first adapted by Henry Howard, the Earl of Shore, in his translation of some books of Virgil's Aeneid. Its original sources or homes were classical Greece and Rome from where it was adopted by the Italian Renaissance writers. It is called blank verse because, as opposed to the conventions of metrical composition, it was not in stanzas. Rather, it was marked by verse paragraphs that set off each sustained unit of meaning. In the hands of a capable poet, it is a supple instrument uniquely capable of conveying speech rhythm and emotional overtones. A number of famous English poets and playwrights such as John Milton in Paradise Lost, Alfred Lord Tennyson in his narrative verses, William Shakespeare, Ben Johnson, Christopher Marlowe, and other Elizabethan playwrights resorted to the creative use of blank verse in their various plays. Heroic Verse This is the iambic pentameter lines rhyming in twos. A A, B B, C C, and Lord Mel. It is called heroic because it was the medium used for epic poetry and plays in English. However, it evolved from the 14th century when it was the medium utilized by Geoffrey Chaucer and was usually written in the 10 syllable lines. Its usage became widespread and popular in the 17th and the 18th centuries, at which time it became known as heroic couplets. There are two distinct types of heroic couplets, the close and the open. The close couplet is that in which the end of the two lines of the couplet coincides with the end of either a sentence, a complete thought, or a self-contained unit of syntax, with a pause at the end of the first line and a termination of that unit of thought at the end of the second line. On the other hand, is the open couplet. In the open couplet, the syntax is not symmetrical. The lines run on, and the rhyme is a mere ornament rather than marking the end of the verse, as in the vibrant and rhythmical opening lines of Chaucer's prologue to the Canterbury Tales. Free verse. In the words of Hees and Lawton, free verse may be defined as rhythmical lines varying in length, adhering to no fixed metrical pattern and usually on rhyme. It is a form of poetry organized to the cadences of speech and image patterns rather than according to a regular metrical scheme. Simply put, the free verse is a verse with no rhyme correspondence and no metrical flow. These characteristics were meant to free poetry from the restriction of formal metrical patterns and approximate the free rhythm of natural speech. In this sense, free verse is written with a general rhythm rather than any pattern of a meter or line length. It has a vague rhythm based largely on repetition, balance, and variation of phrases or parallel grammatical structure. There is no doubt that the absence of a regular stress pattern or meter may lead to misconception that this type of verse is arbitrary and lacks the discipline imposed 
by conventional rhythmic pattern. To correct this misconception, T.S. Eliot has rightly remarked that no verse is free for the poet who wants to do a good job since the absence of meter does not indicate the absence of rhythm. You should be able to detect the rhythmic pattern achieved in a poem written in free verse through the peculiar variation in line length, repetition, adopted by the poet. The French symbolist poet of the late 19th century and the American Walt Whitman, as well as the most modern poet, especially the images of the 20th century, made effective use of free verse. Finally, poetry is best enjoyed when it is read aloud. Certain features make this act of reading aloud passive. The three verse forms that we have just studied contribute in no small measure to the feel and texture of the richness of a well-composed poem. Ladies and gentlemen, we believe you have found this particular video interesting. Please kindly share this content on all social media platforms. See you in the next video.